Hey, good afternoon. It's a rainy bank holiday Sunday here in the UK. And it's the end of summer. Nearly. Anyway, look what we have uh, on, on this lazy Sunday, because I'm not going to do too much today, but we have John's um, parts caster, Charvel. And this guitar is um, put together from nice quality components. We've got a Charvel neck. We've got a, a, I'm not sure where the origin of the body is, but nice colored body. It's a Gary Moore tribute guitar. EMG active pickup and a tremolo, Floyd Rose tremolo. Which it works, on one level works very nicely. It holds its tuning very well, but it doesn't quite return to pitch. So it goes flat, then you have to pull it to get it back. So anyway, there's a couple of reasons for this. Well, hopefully we can discover the reasons. Um, but there's a few, few little things that we can hopefully make um, an impact on. So the first one is to um, understand what it is that's going on with the tremolo. Um, I'm going to do my best to get that playing because it's a special guitar. I know that um, it matters a lot to John to have this playing as good as it can play, or as well as it can play. I hope that you can't see a whole load of magic, magic thing, magic arm in the way of the picture there, but sorry if you can. I'm not sure another way to mount it. Anyway, so just going to show you one of the issues that I think is causing a problem with this guitar and that's the um, I've kind of worked out that the tremolo block is too short for this uh, this body so the route is deeper and um, well the, sorry the actual spring cavity route floor isn't deep enough so the springs are going over the edge of um, they're hitting the wood as they go over the top so if I were to show you this in operation you'll probably be able to see quite easily they're kind of bending over the wood so that's not helping it um, and there may be some or the, there is some residual friction there which may well be all that's stopping it return to tune it wouldn't surprise me if that's all there is to it so a, a solution to that is to increase the depth of this um, block and Kind of while we're at it, it sort of it makes real sense to uh, upgrade it with something better quality. Um, so if we can if we can replace that with a brass block, we'll be laughing. I have a horrible feeling that the only the correct what's it is in the house. I took, I took them inside, didn't I? Um, okay. Let's see if we can do it with one of these. Nope, it's in the house. Last, governor. Oh, well. huh? Is there one of these? Oh, it might be here. There might be one small enough. That's one, two, three sizes of this. You'd think it would be that one, wouldn't you? No, it's too big. Okay, it's got to be this one, hasn't it? Actually, funny enough, it has. So that's a saves us a go around. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Save us a run around indoors. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this apart right now, and we just we're going to then have a close look at the tremolo. Take that apart if possible, and get us ordering some a new part. But we have to measure the um, the bits. I haven't seen. I'm not sure how it attaches yet, so that'll be a bit new for me. Um, the other thing, the couple of other things on this guitar, the strings are misaligned a bit down the neck. There's too much, there's too much real estate on the bass side for my liking. Um, also, what we've got here is the pickup runs underneath the uh, runs under the the bridge plate, which is again also not a good thing. So I'm going to make a make a little little mark on here before we take it off, just so I know where it's sitting and how. We're going to need to adjust it. The, the challenge with this is that if we if we open this out, 
um, there's a screw there which is not going to want to play ball. In other words, it's um, yeah, it's kind of would have. What the heck is going on here? Ooh. This is low tack, all right, but I've never seen quite such low tack before. Let's try and get it something that actually sticks. Weird. But I think what I'll also do is, is when I'm doing this bit of sticky down. Really, I'm just uh, using this to mark the extent to which this Trenolo arm runs over the pit guard, so I can I can see how far we're going to need to cut. Um, but it's it's going to it potentially cuts into where the, um, the pick. This is really not very sticky. Make sure it's dry. I think it's a bit humid today as well, but that's kind of okay when you're working with. Um, polishing out frets but when it refuses to stick at all like this it's not very helpful okay I'm going to use that as my marker just for now um, where are we oh yeah let's, let's lift you up a minute see on this mag magic magic arm the magic arm now that's coming off as well hmm humidity not good I'll just watch and see the thing fall off Okay, so we've got our strings unstrung, and this is going to uh, drop back. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to put a bit of foam under here anyway, before it does, so that these all the little feet don't land on the uh, on the guitar surface anyway. So I'll cut that there until I take the springs off, and I can undo these with my windery thing. This is the first, I must note to self, I must buy another one of these. This broke and I, I kind of fixed it by hand, but it, and it's always seemed to have worked since. But it, it must have broken about eight years ago, ten years ago, and I, I've been too, too cheap to buy another one. Which is weird, really. Um, yeah, so this, this will need realigning. This neck is definitely not from this guitar. There's a, there's a clear difference in the two um, as there's an indication of where, you, where the sun hasn't bleached or darkened the uh, lacquer here so it shows a different profile where it's fitted to a different guitar but that's fine it's no big deal let's take the springs off and then we can see the extent that they're scraping on the uh, wood this carefully then I need um, probably the same hopefully the same Allen key hex key to undo these um, this is often where you find you see the the, port, the worst aspects of the uh, Chinese built ones and um, the cheaper ones they seem to the metal seems to give away because you have to this is, this is, I think it's a really terrible design actually you have to really really clamp the strings in tight to make them work um, which puts an awful load both on the hex key unit or the hex key fitting at the back but also uh, on the threads themselves so there you go so there's the unit so I will have to take this mostly completely apart and also I'm going to do these back up to make sure we don't lose the uh, vital little gripping bits which you know as I say I think it's a pretty lousy design there's no reason why this couldn't be done the other way around in, in so far that the ball should go through and then anchor on the on this unit here and go through onto the tuning pegs as a um, cut end and, and I know I know it can do that because on my Yamaha SE350H it did that I thought it was just a brilliantly simple little innovation. There were little kind of holders to put the ball of the string in down inside the, somewhere inside the bridge. But it was a very good innovation, I have to say. So that's not the right size for that. Maybe we've got the one smaller one here, wherever it went. Uh, lift it up, put it down, misplaced it. Or is this the smallest one I've got? I think it is the smallest one I've got. So I guess it will end up being one of these. Yeah. 
So here's the, the unit. I suppose we'll have to take it completely apart to get everything up. I'll put the I'll put the right the right ones back in the right ones so we know which belongs where and we don't lose the little um, the little block. Um, now I don't really think they matter which way which you know which is which, but just for just for sort of because it's I want to, any any peculiarity that it's picked up over the years from sitting in that position. Might as well just recreate it or refit it the same way. So I'm just going to put high E. There's no harm in keeping track that way. And if you're doing this, remember to um, remember to tighten when you put the retaining retaining thing what do you call it retaining bolt back in bolt yeah uh, do it back up until it hits the little block so that way you you won't lose the little gripper block they're easy enough to get and in fact I've got a few Chinese units with plenty of those in that do exactly the same thing so in fact you know worst comes to the worst if you were doing someone's guitar and you were to lose one they're easy enough to get hold of so, so basically we're going to end up with access to the three hex key things underneath here uh, which hold the block on but they will be they will allow me to um, measure the distance the, you know, the spacing so we can just confirm that what we're by as a replacement brass block will actually fit uh, G. And do it so left handed does it up. Do. So, this Floyd Rose, um, I don't know, I can't really see what brand this is. Uh, it's not easy to see. I'll have a good look around it in a minute, but so don't know whether it's a sort of official one. I don't think it's a Floyd Rose manufactured one. I think it's hard. It very seems very, very hard to tell anymore what's what, um, and I, you know, in looking for parts, I was saying to John about this guitar um, that there seem to be, and I could be wrong, but in first impressions is that you get 30 pound units, which are made in China, and sold in places like AliExpress or anywhere on eBay, and then there are. Um, 300 or 200 pound units which seem to be made by people like Goto and Schaller or, or even Floyd Rose themselves if they still make stuff I don't even know that um, and then you get some strange thing in between which seems to be around about 80 quid or 80 pounds UK GB pounds um, I those things don't seem to be branded they just say licensed by but then the Chinese 30 pound ones say licensed by and of course they aren't um, but that's what it says so who knows what we actually have here now what the indicators first of all that it's a reasonably good quality thing is that these look really nicely machined or kind of they've been cut on a milling machine these discs or tuning micro tuning bits so they look pretty cool it has um, it has a logo on it which uh, which ha oh, sorry it has a FR logo so this might actually be a Floyd Rose it has three choices of locking places here which is good um, most of the Chinese ones have two if I'm not mistaken and we have these three fixing points here. Oh, I probably should have just measured the center to centers before I take them out. It's a bit easier than trying to line up on a hole. But they should be standardized, but it just doesn't hurt to be absolutely sure about that. First of all. OK. 
Okay, so I don't know what the view is. So here we go, dazzle, dazzle. Now this is a, still a slightly crude way of doing it because there is no actual center to go off, but um, I would say that is, it's somewhere in the 16 to 17 mil distance apart. Hard to say exactly. Um, 16, 17, but it's a good indicator. If I have it right on my hand. 16, 17, and then when we're inside, we can check any available brass versions. And of course, we can just double check the height of this unit, the bridge. Uh, block so we can replace it with a much better quality one. Then we have to also look at a, an alternative a way of solving the rattle that's going on with this arm because that's I know that was driving John a bit bonkers when he was playing with it. Okay so what happens next is you get these bits come off like this. It's very simple in some ways it's a clever little thing so um, those bits come off. I'm going to take a picture of those bits there, so I just remember which way on they go. There's probably no other possible way. Um, can I switch this off? I'm sure it makes complete sense, but I like to um, have it there so I can actually remember. Yeah, this is only one way, but always better to be safer than sorrier. Um, so that can go in there, and then we have. Let's just do these all up, the micro tuners, just so they stay where they are for now. And they're in good shape. Um, yeah, Floyd Rose Special, it says. Um, and there we have it, this little block here. 34 millimeter, and we really need um, something that's 42, really. 44 or 42. I think they do them in 42s. Anyway, okay, so... Um, that's fine, that's that bit done. So just going back to the guitar itself, what we'll do, is we'll take off the strings. Um, and we'll, 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 let's, uh, let's, let's, let's keep, I think John said they were new, so let's, relatively new, so let's, we won't use them again to play, but let's use, let's keep them for, um, sacrificial purposes when I come to set this guitar up after we've figured out the tremolo issues and the tremolo arm squeakings because I think they should be good for sacrificial purposes and ball ends are already cut off so that bit of the job's taken care of so I'll just bag these up I'll loop them around put a little label on them so we'll call them Charvel nines. I can't remember what they are, but let's measure them when it comes to replace them. So these are Charvel. There's nothing sticking today. Charvel Gary Moore um, JB, as in John. And we'll stick them somewhere up here with a bunch of others. Right. Ooh, we've got a loose. We've got a loose um, nut. That wouldn't be so good. The question about that is whether it's actually at its limits, whether this will tighten up. Uh, I think it will tighten up. Okay. So that will also reduce the action slightly by holding it down a bit tighter. Okay, so that's that. Um, so the edge of the bridge just comes to the edge of the thing. That's interesting. Uh, let me just think about it. Was this originally a six screw tremolo? Or am I, am I imagining something here? Uh, post, yeah, that must have been a six, six screw tremolo body. Um, yeah, it's a classic um, Classic cavity for a six screw trim. So well, that's interesting, isn't it? Uh, it's also slightly off centre with the, uh, the back or the front edge of the bridge as well. 
Not hard to recreate that, but what it means is this it's also not very straight, so no, we'll worry about that later. It's too it's too humid to make this stick, but anyway, uh, yeah, so curiously that is showing signs that have markings as if it were a six screw tremolo. But it, actually what I think is happening is that the um, retaining bolts are coming through and pressing on there, which itself is quite interesting. Um, and I suspect that's really happening because the, the even though it's still playing high, the action, as you, you might be able to see, that these posts are screwed right down to the stops. So it's these little fixing screws here for the saddles are close enough to... Sorry. Just getting this camera thing wrong. They're close enough. These screws that go through here to hold the saddles in place are scraping on the um, scraping on the underside on the paintwork here, and that's because this is right pretty much on its stops to get a low action. So, given that that's on its stops and the action's too high, I suspect one of the things that's going to have to happen is we're going to have to shim the neck to get it to play properly. So, let's have a look at what it's currently doing. If there's anything shimming it already, um, uh, notice that it was creaky anyway, um, meaning it's not. There's hardly any torque on it doing undoing it. Uh, no, there's none. It's very loose, so it could do with being tighter anyway. Yeah, incredibly loose. So that's another aspect. So we shouldn't have too much trouble. I think the real issue is going to be um, improving the block. And once we've improved the block, things are going to look up. Okay, that's the that's the shim it's already got under there to make it work. I'll take that as a payment to Luthia. Nice little thin plectrum, just my style. I'll, obviously, I'll replace that now. This is quite of an interesting condition. I don't know how well you can see that, but that's been looks like it's been drilled out and chiseled by hand, but it's not in the least bit even. Kind of goes all over the place. So um, it'll still work okay, uh, but it's not a brilliant state of affairs. It's obviously it's, as we know it's too low. Um, we're going to need to shim it properly or better than that um, but with all of these holes in here there isn't a fantastic wood wood to anything connection especially not if we you know with a shim in it um, it's got a lip here as well it comes up at the side so basically the the neck is sitting on this ridge here and possibly done about on there um, but it's really uneven and then if you sort of look across that, I don't know how they, you can't really see it so well. Maybe there's a, you can see the light behind it possibly. There's a great big gap from the edge to edge, which, which isn't going to, it's not a good connection. Um, it's not the end of the world, but uh, it would be nicer to clean that out. But that would mean taking down the, um, taking down this even further. And this, this we've already proved that this isn't good enough or tall enough um, it's also been re-drilled filled and re-drilled so there's there's evidence of um, dowel softwood dowels being put in here to improve the grip um, but I'm not sure how good that currently is they look really big those holes um, and it feels loose so to be quite honest I think this would probably benefit from I don't know let's see we'll have a, have a feel but there's a lot of movement in there. It would probably benefit from having these pulled and um, some hardwood. And I just noticed earlier on, I happen to have some oak dowel, which I found a cute way of making, um, which is much harder, obviously, than or well, harder than the maple, and certainly harder than the relatively soft wood inserts in here. But this, I found, having struggled for ages to make dowels from um, in a solid timber, obviously it's quite, I haven't got a supply of oak dowels, but 
um, what I found was on the tongue, of, tongue and groove pieces that I can get, the, the tongue part chiselled off or hacksawed off makes, as it happens, very easy to make a nice dowel from it. So I've got enough to do those four and I would think this deserves it. Now in terms of fixing this, one thing I've discovered that is actually quite a good way of doing it um, is to put in, uh, what would I do, I put in some, um, tape all this off, protect it, and then put in some um, like metal putty uh, resin into there and then squeeze it in with this flat surface here. So basically we put it in and we lightly clamp it. What it does is it will squeeze out the excess and when it sets, obviously we put some mm, cellophane on here or you know kitchen roll, and what you get is a flat surface which is filled in these. You can do it with clear resin or any kind of thing but it's got to be able to fill these pockets which are all over here and you, it's actually quite a good way. I've done it, in fact I did it on um, Nick's Coacaster body as well which is down there because something splintered in there. Um, so you know that's quite good and, and it will just fill these bits and if you get the sort of right amount and you mask, this, mask all of this off what you won't get is any spill or anything showing through but that would give a much better chance of wood to wood contact. In fact it's probably just as, as well to, to pull it in with the original screws for now and then what I'd do is replace those once we've created that flat level. So that's what I'm going to do, I tells myself. Um, while we're at it, uh, I think John would appreciate a, a quick buff of this guitar um, before it goes back to him and we might as well. Uh, so for that to be the case and since we're taking loads of stuff off, um, yeah, that's interesting. So it's a, I didn't realise it has three, three outputs. Anything? Let's have a look. Just have to make sure I remember which is which, because it's a, it's an active pickup. Um, yeah. So we'll take we'll take everything out, everything off. I'll try and remove this with the least amount of misery, and then we'll get it all apart. Hang up its basic components and then we'll, we'll work on it in stages. So, up you go. Quite difficult anyway to get pots off without damaging the underlying um, uh, sorry knobs off without damaging the underlying pots because they are always pulling upwards and I don't think the pots really like that kind of um, pressure. Some people like to use two uh, two spoons together. Um, sometimes I used to use a bit of cloth to get me an upward pull. It's not working today. We do need to get this out, otherwise we're not going to be able to do any buffing. Um, and it really is reluctant. I don't know if it's been glued, but the knob is completely loose as well. Um, anyway. So we've got to get it out or up. Um, right. So if I've got two bits of plastic, I can leave it at the same time. I used to keep two bits of this sort of stuff, pit guard plastic. Um, actually, it's quite potentially quite a nice little unit, but I think it's too flexible. A little bendy thing here, but we really need. Something we can put put on a little little lever kind of thing like this. But again, it might be better if it were metal. The problem with this is that it's um it's already it's already loose. You can see so it's hanging out. Anyway, okay. blemish here where John accidentally almost put a screw through and um, don't think there's anything we can do to just uh, rectify that. And we could 
break the seal if you like and fill it um, I don't think I'd probably just make it more rather than less visible you tend to still see the repair okay and while we're at it we'll also take the posts out and just have a, an examination of them as well this one's reluctant to come out it might be because it's it's tied up with the um, the, the uh, bridge ground it might be wrapped around it wouldn't surprise me because you need that and I can see it Standard black pick card screw, as it happens. This is interesting because this. Okay. So it's like, oh, that's right. So, hmm. Of course, it's not hanging when it goes straight through the body, right? Okay. Does that come off? Okay, there's our. Uh, we'll go. That's flat to the inside, that's upwards. I'm just going to write a U on here so I, I know where this face is. Upward. Oh, actually, it's, it's up when fitting, so you need to see that while we're fitting it, right? That's all I need to know. Refer back to video if I'm confused. Like I say, this one, I suspect I'm going to see some wires sticking out of the hole. We should do anyway. Can't see them right now, but we'll have a look with some um, some light. This is a bit crunchy around here. Uh, now I kind of didn't necessarily want to pull off the uh, the, uh, the knob out, but then I have to really the pot because if I'm going to get a, a bit of buffing going on here at some point, that makes sense. All be straightforward. Take apart, put back down again. Okay, so wobbly knob. We have the obvious trim claw thing. Uh, yeah, that's okay. So we don't have wire in that hole because the earth is here, of course, the trim claw. Okay, that comes through to here, and then we have the pickup connector through here, which I don't really want to take out. Or anything because it's you know, just mean disconnecting it completely. You got some weird holes and things going on here. That's not bad, that went straight into the container. Alright, so everything's connected, but I'm just trying to get it so I can seal it in there and buff over the top of it without pulling it all out because there's no reason to pull it all out. Nice big. CTS pot. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Well, no, that should be okay. It should be grounded against there. Blah 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 blah. All right. Yeah. So this is. I don't know if you can see now. You can see the the damage with the springs are constantly wearing over this edge. So we can take care of that with the new um, full sized thingy. Now with this, I'm going to take this off, but I'm going to mark which goes where. So I've not used active pickups before. It's also good to re um, re solder these. They look like they're almost falling apart. So that's going to be red. This is going to be Take on here. If I can, if I can make it stick in this humid conditions. There you go. So we'll put that one will be black and this one will be white as in white by virtue of the paper. And then we shouldn't have any problems connecting them up. Now save firing off the soldering irons right now. I can just now do this, put that over there, and these can get tucked away in there for the purposes of um, 
buffing. And I can get a bit of paper. And just, just plug the hole, make it make it stay put for the time being, without any trouble. There you go. You know, not bother us. Now this is this. I want. I kind of want to make this sit down, and it wants to be out of the way. So we may have to try a bit of a bit of the old gorilla to get this to work. I'm not saying it will work. I just need. I don't mind the. I don't mind the buffer pad running over the top of um, of this tape. I don't want it grabbing any of the components or anything like that. So what I'm trying to do. If I can remember where things went. That's a bit knackered. Let's get a new one. I keep putting out new ones and they keep disappearing. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just cut along inside there. Dunk, like that. And then, I don't know, something like that. Trying to use it all up instead of wasting it. Something like that. And then something like that. So it's kind of very important that it bites the edge of this little ledge. it just stays on long enough to do a bit of buffing will be all right. And it's, the purpose is just to avoid any anything catching and snagging. But we might as well take, <coughs> ouch, take care of it there as later. There you go. Just a springy protective case. Okay. That's that. That's that. Okay, that's fine. It won't. It won't do anything. It won't. It won't reach into there. Uh, no, that's okay. And then we'll do something similar here, which would be a little bit more difficult, but we'll try and. Persuade it to stick down inside of here like that. <laughs> and then a bit too much in there, but it's really just to keep things out of the way. There's not many wires nearby, so we can cut just the top of that bit off. Like that. Okay. Cool. Now, also on this guitar, the uh, strap buttons were wobbly, so the f uh, well, loose, I should say, not so much wobbly. So we need to take those out to, for buffing anyway. And then we need to just examine whether they need any filling or gluing or whatever when we go to put them back in. They're, they're big long things made for strap locks. Um, but again, they, they've sort of created some cracking as well around the holes. Okay, so that's good. This is in a good, there's cracking around here too. It's in a good shape to buff and everything's um, covered up. So we can give it a quick refresh uh, on a dry day. Right. So, in fact, just for the sake of not being driven completely crazy by rattlings and stuff, let's take the trim claw out as well. Now this is critical. The trim claw is a brilliant tool as you may have seen from others of my videos. A brilliant tool for doing the setup of the Tram uh, Floyd Rose. It's quite loose actually. I'm hoping it's got grip. Um, yeah, but it's very useful. It's a critical part of the 
um, reset up once you've uh, you've changed your strings and you want to come set up the, the Floyd Rose. And I use that Galeazzo Frudua method in which you know he, he depends on the these screws to, to do the final adjustment and it's it's quite elegant how it works. Okay, so now we have the body free of encumbrances and all rattly things. So we put all the useful bits in there and we want to just take a look at this a little bit, a little modification on that due or required. Um, I think this deserves, I think I might do this resin thing shortly. Um, I'm thinking of what the best way to tape this off. Use a, probably use a polythene bag of some kind taped. Um, makes it a little bit difficult because it has to come up the sides because you can't tape it on there because you won't fit this back in. But we use this to flat to create the flat surface in there. So, and we'll use the we'll have the bridge plate, sorry, the neck plate and neck screws standing by to do their duty. So it feels like um being what's his name? James May taking a guitar to pieces. Um, so I'm just, oh, that's, that is terrible. I mean, I'm gonna do some close up pictures of this because it, it is a bit of a shocking job. Um, I mean, this will prevent, the neck won't even sit straight in there because of the, the way it's cut. Um, so I can look at the sort of lumps and bumps. Yeah, horrible. I think what I want to demonstrate is that kind of gaps, the light gaps under there. There you go, I think that makes the point. Right. Okay, so my first little game will be to get some resin into here. Um, but I want to pull down, but I don't. What I don't want is resin to get into there. That's a little bit difficult. Um, I mean, we can sort of aim to miss that. Okay, that's bumpy as well. That, that won't even sit flat. I mean, what's the neck doing at that point? I've got a truss rod at the heel as well. Not very useful. That needs adjusting too. That's, that is not a good, not a nice fit at all. One of the things that probably I would like to do, if I can get the right chisel, is, and I can see all right, is just get a sort of feel of what's sticking up and what isn't. Okay, so there's tons of that's all sticking up there. It's very flowery, it's like a, a lightweight, or a very light, flowery sort of timber. And then you can see down here, it's, God, it really is. It's not a cut at all. It's just sort of a, a kind of a clump of stuff. So first, I mean, the reason I'm doing this to the back of the pocket is, is that you really do want the guitar neck to come up and touch the back stop um, as much as possible. I mean, obviously the screws kind of dictate that but if, if you can hold it nicely against the back that would be much better okay so we're going to need it's really low in the pocket it's almost at the level of the fingerboard um, so I'm just trying to think whether it's worth yeah why not why not why not I'm just thinking if we do that Actually, if we, do, if we use the screws, then there's a risk of um, stuff going down inside there. But if we fill that, then we don't have to worry. Um, the other thing I can see is that these screws are pulling on the... Uh, the screw holes are pulling... Sorry, the screws that are being used are pulling... are threading on the, um, the pocket 
wood. And in a way, that's probably not ideal. One of the things I've kind of learned over time is what you really want is this to be slightly bigger so that the, it's just a channel for the screws. You don't want the screws particularly pulling on that. Um, you'd much rather they travel through there and, and exert their force on that, for which, of course, those have to be good condition holes. Um, but again, it depends. See, these are obviously just about the right size, so you might want to go a little larger than this. And I don't want to try and ream that because uh, the reamer is a reamer. The reamer is a little bit tapered, too much tapered. Wherever it's, where did I put it? it should be sticking out somewhere. Uh, okay, it's on the side. Yeah, it's a bit too. That's too deep, and the reamer's too tapered. So that would have to be a slow-moving drill bit to a tune of something like that. Um, it's dead on the right size, but even that with a bit of a, a bit of woggle in it would be better than um, it being too snug to the screw threads. these if we can find something to plug them with. And then level the cavity then. Right. So it's a small um, a small adjustment but it may help to give a clean pull on the neck. Okay, so that sort of thing. What's the best way? So if we don't use the screws to pull, but the screws on the other hand would block it quite nicely. Undo it, pull it off. Now actually, you know what? It's probably better if we do use the screws after all. So let me get some polythene baggy stuff. Uh, polythene bag, polythene bag. Plastic bag, Chinese plastic bag, all the way from China. Something like this will do. Oh look, I just lost my new blade. There it is. Okay, let's cut this down. That I don't a new bridge, a new Chinese bridge that I don't need to use for quite some time. So that is going to get taped back up until such time as, 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 it, as it is needed, which is not now. All right, but thank you for donating your Chinese cellophane, which will allow me to do basically that. We'll go through the screws, we'll put that down there, and then, all right, okay. So, alongside of this, I just want to be sure or careful that we don't have any spillage that comes out onto the paintwork, which is a priority. So I'll just attempt Again, with the slightly un, relatively unsticky stuff that we've got at the moment, attempt to mask it off. Should be fine. Um, it's really good for doing fret leveling and stuff because it's it doesn't grip the lacquer too much, so it's nice and safe for that. But it's feeling a little bit, a little bit. Unsticky at the moment. Take you off. Right. Just want to get right up to the edge of the pocket there. So anything that, if there's any overspill, it'll just go onto that and into the 
completely safe side, we can just overlap it. Sorry, I'm not a very good angle of doing things at the moment. Just overlap it here so if there's any um, spill, it'll just be. Oh no, we've got to get to there, haven't we? Nope. Well, if any comes out that far, we should pretty much know about it. So I'm, I'm going to just unhook that so we don't run the risk of obstructing the plate. Okay, so that'll do nicely. So a little bit on the front here. easy to make it stick where you want it, frankly. It's sort of several curves, 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 curves are going in different planes, so it's yeah, not easy. In fact, it's nearly impossible. You can come down at 90 degrees, but that won't make meet up with the other piece. Around the front, bend it round, fold it over, something like that. Anyway, it won't come up this far, the, the, any spillage, but just trying to be totally thorough. Okay, so the idea will be, stick, we stick some, we pour some resin into these holes and we flatten it out as good as possible, as well as possible. And then we put that in there, and then we put the neck on there, and then we put the screws in and pull it tight. Theoretically, together, that should form a flat surface shape, or the hole should fill in, um, form, a, form a flat corresponding with that. Um, but it's not the end of the world if it doesn't, but that's the plan. Now, the question is, let's use the Gorilla stuff, because I trust its quality. Just feels better than having a great big um, uneven surface uh, and having it balanced on the end of here. Now we're going to get um, the other thing is, uh, I suppose a, a way of doing this. We could let me just think about this for a minute. Another way of another approach would be to. Now we're going to shim this anyway, aren't we? So we can, am I am I am I overkilling this really? I just am offended by this, it's so uneven. Um, but we're realistically we're gonna end up with a little bit of a shim. And the only way we're gonna get that to join is to, we could do the same thing, but we have to have the shim in place and it's gonna squeeze out. Um, that's about point three, isn't it? We're, we'll end up squeezing out the leftovers, um, but we'll end up with a kind of wedge shaped fill all right, it's 0.6, and that isn't enough, so we do need a better shim than that. Now, I don't have access to making little tiny wedge-shaped things, unfortunately, as much as I'd like to. Um, so I, I tend to use more crude methods, which end up looking like chunks of copper of something like in the region of 1.2. That's twice as big as the previous one, but I think that wouldn't be at all bad. It's got to be more than 0.6, that's for starters. Um, more than 0.6, and that's a little bit of a fraction long. More than 0.6, um, and doesn't really have an upper limit because whatever it is, we can adjust the bridge up to meet. Um, the only consideration is obviously the higher the shim, the bigger the shim is, the higher the, the thing, the neck is going to stand off. But actually, given that it's standing off anyway, it's not even sitting very cleanly on the surface right now, it's not that critical a thing. You know, the, in an ideal world, it would be great to have a, a um, what do you call it, you know, a tapered wedge, but doing that 
down to the exact dimension is pretty difficult and I don't have the means to do it. I've done it, I have done it before with um, by using um, ply and, and sorry, laminate, making sheets of laminate and then kind of filing down from there and it's just about getting something of a taper. But to be honest, if you don't get it perfectly, then you're still creating um, air gaps and you might as well not have bothered um, because because you yeah it's got to be absolutely perfectly matched to the the wedge shaped um, curve if you know I mean. anyway I'm just tidying this up so it's not so curly shaped off very quickly, get rid of any burrs on the edges. So it'll be as flat as it can be. So the, the point being is if it was 0.6 and we were way too high, 1.2 is twice that and we'll be probably, up, the neck will probably be up close to the um, it's not touching the strings, but that's fine because then that gives us a chance to move the post upwards, uh, to create some uh, to lift lift it up at the post, raise the action at the post, I should say. So let's just check this for positioning. Okay, that's nicely in there. I mean, it would, this guitar doesn't really need an angle. It would I'm just trying to think. It would probably benefit from. Probably benefit from a f uh, actually might benefit from a flat shim, wouldn't it? Let's think about this. Um, let me just get that all the way up to there. That's what's wrong. It's too low in the pocket generally. Do we get a higher? Yeah. See, the, the the single point shim is a sort of quick and dirty solution, um, but in a way, this this might. This might benefit from um, from a straight lift. I'm trying to think whether that. I wonder what I could make that out of. That's easier. Again, the problem is you only want about the millimeter and a bit. Well, I say 1.2 millimeters, and getting that um, at both ends is, is really tricky. Unless, of course, you use the same. You know, you put you put two bits of copper in there and just do a do a straight lift. Effectively, you're pulling the whole thing against. Effectively, um, actually, tell you what I have got. Let me just think. I've got something hidden over here that might just be even better than that. And I can't remember how much these cost me, but we've got brass in pocket. We've got brass pieces that I was going to use if I needed to on Nick's guitar, and they're actually exactly the same thickness. So technically, we could make a complete raising single shim. It would raise that up. Probably do it. What do you reckon? A single piece feels more. But we still want this to be flat on there. Um, we could achieve that anyway, couldn't we? Put the two together. But then what we'd have is we'd have the neck pulling this against a slightly uneven surface, which would want to buckle, but. Not so far. Well, okay. So the best way to get the exact shaped shim, the exact shaped shim, is to draw that on there. And whilst making the least amount of cutting possible. And or the least amount of hard work possible, should we say? Okay, uh, let's take 
fine pen which won't probably stay on there very long. Okay, there's our shape. And that will be slightly larger. Let's try it. Go on, it's only a piece of brass. What the hell? Let's see if it cuts it even. Wow. Snip. Of course, I need to file this, I suppose, to get it to where we really want it. Brass is quite brittle in a way. <laughs> that fell and stabbed into the floor and stayed there. But it will, it's, it's difficult to cut, but it will actually, um, it would, it'll um, sh uh, file easier than this. <clears throat> Crows in my neighborhood are making a racket, They're behaving as if winter's come back. Damn them. Wow, this is quite tough. I don't really have any, um, any saw that will cut this, so I'm just having to use my tin snips, which is a little bit of a, a hard ask. That's a nice piece of shim for another day. So I'll give this a little go and put this in the vise and we'll file down any overhangs and stuff. Let's see if this will work better than doing a, a um, you know, triangular, effectively, a triangular raising shim. Because this is, as you, you know, this is, it it's just needs a lift. Um, and it should work this way. <laughs> he said, hopefully. You get a sort of, you get more of a, a change of an angle when you do a, a one point shim. Um, but this way you effectively raise a whole lot up. Um, Let's put that on there. And I've sort of lost, yeah, I've lost my pen mark. It's quite understandable. Let's put it back on there for a second and make it again. And maybe what I'll do is I'll try and mark this in there with a permanent marker see what I'm doing. It doesn't have to be accurate, it could be a little smaller than. We just need to see what I'm taking off. Just round that off for me. It's hmm. fun. Probably just as well. It leaves a bit of a 
ugly gap. I suppose that's the downside of doing it this way. The upside is you get a nice flat um, solid join. The, up, the, the downside is you, you have a bit of a gap. But you're not going to get away with it either way. So I'll, I'll tailor that a bit later on because I quite like the idea of that. Meantime, we'll use this as a start point. Um, and theoretically, if we leave that right there and, and then add some, uh, some of our gunge, we should be able to press it down and get it to sit in that particular uh, slightly wedge shape. Okay, so we don't want too much. I might solve it just like this. So. I should be in practicing for next week's gig. That's what I should be doing. Because our main guitarist, James, is not going to be available to play. So it's going to be just me. Okay. So I am going to, I want that to go around there, it's going to be as high as that. Okay, that's quite fun. I want this over the back end of there for a start, so I need it to sit down into there. I need to scrape it off. And you, where it's touching the back in a minute. And we'll go into the holes. Something quite deep. Like somebody drilled it out. I was going to say before chiseling it, but I'm not even sure they looking at it whether it was even chiseled or not. Okay, I'm just going to up here and avoid as much as possible avoid the holes and then also pull it away from the sides just needs to just, just fill, the, fill the sort of gouges really more than anything now it's not there's not enough material in there to make a wedge, um, so we could. Uh, where did it go? Uh, I know I can see it somewhere in my mind's eye. I just put it back. Where did I put it? It's amazing when you're looking for something and it's completely vanished from your line of sight. How strange. Where did I just put that? Oh, there, it's not that. <laughs> oh, wow. Did I just hang it back up? No, that's some different stuff. Oh, boy. I'm looking and seeing nothing. Right, somebody help me. It's not that. It's not that. It's not that. It's not that. Where did I just put the resin? Did I just hang it back up? No. Oh, there it is, on the table. Wow, I am losing my marbles quite quickly thank you that's weird when you can't actually see something you've just put down okay i'm going to get ready with my my tea neck bolts in a minute. Right, so let's put let's load some of that up just in front of the, the uh, copper wedge so we can get it to press it flat. Do that round the side. Of course you're working against the clock in this matter. Um, 
I mean, it's not it's not the world's quickest stuff but it's not neither is it the slowest so you, you don't have total time to piddle about too much so we need a fair amount at that end and less at this end because we're going to get something of a uh, wedge when all is said and done so I'm just going to put this last bit behind the copper and then we're going to use the magic of good old fashioned physics to do the rest. Get that out of the way. Now get our plastic sheeting. Lay that in there like that. I should have got the damned thing, hand thing, screwdriver. I'm going to do it manually. Well, I really want it to be sitting flat at this point. Okay, there's the first one in place. Come on, sit in your little cup, will you? That's done the squeezing out some uh, some excess already, which is good, exactly what I want. And sorry, you can't see anything. Um, and any excess is now on the touching the um, paper masking tape. Definitely feels to me like that. Uh, that neck heel needs re thingying because it's it's um, not the grip isn't very good at all. Anyway, so that's that's my attempt to uh, basically flatten that out with a shim in place. And I can see quite a quite a considerable well relative angle now in it that you didn't have before um, but in a, in truth that's the only way you're going to get it to reach up to give you back um, adjust, adjustability I suppose you could call it. Right so that really needs to just ideally sit there and if anything I think I might stop and go and have a break but sit there and if there's any excess squeezing out this way it's going to come out and hopefully the plan is when I come to undo this um, we'll be able to excuse me pull the neck out first and then we'll pick out the um, puller thing and we'll have more or less a, a flat surface in there I'll give, give you an example of how it works. Oh, I don't know if you can see this. It's not a complete one, but there was a couple of deep gouges inside there, and I did. I filled that with this stuff, and it just. You can see it's made a shiny finish in there, but it just. It brings the surface back to flat and smooth, and because it's pressed down by the neck itself, it's a nice, smooth impression. Um, my only concern about this one was whether or not the. Um, uh, my only concern would be whether or not the neck bolts have got um, resin in the holes and I don't want them to seize in solid, obviously. So I'm going to make a point of keeping it mo in motion and check one at a time before the uh, resin sets completely. Um, and I have a whole set of other bolts here that we can we can just use as sort of temporary replacements if that if we need to um, possibly not as big even if that's 
see, see, see what the big ones are, two of those, right. So what I'm going to do is just, just to kind of uh, check, I'm going to pull out one of these and see if it's got um, resin, too much resin on it, um, in which case I'll know that I need to keep it on the move. Okay, this one does, so... So I suppose the only other way would have been some sealing it with something like plasticine, maybe. But then you have to then clamp the neck. That's the only other option, which to me doesn't really work very well. This should be pretty, I mean, they're relatively tight, so tight fitting, so you wouldn't kind of expect too much to get down there. So I'll keep it moving just to make sure that it doesn't seize up in there. Stick. The idea will be, even if it goes up the tube a little bit, it won't um, it won't climb all the way up. So, with luck, as long as we keep those together, I don't want to clamp it because I don't want to press anything against the frets. That's the main that's my main consideration. Um, what I do is also. We need to buy more of this. I keep forgetting. Mm, nice smell. So, as I say, we'll probably drill out the um, the heel um, and put those oak inserts in as well. I think that would be a better solution. All right, well, listen, I'm just going to keep taking these in and out one by one, making sure that they're not um, filled up or stuck in place. What I'll do is I'll use this as well easier tool to use. Okay. Okay, it's time to to get sticky now, which is good. It's what we want. The other thing is, of course, we can always um, create new or use new bolts if we want. To, if we had to, but these, these these are cleaning up quite well anyway. So what I'll do is just by keeping. Sorry, I was going to switch off, but by keeping them moving, um, I'm just sort of letting the stuff dry without it causing these to stick in the holes, that's the main thing. Stuff and let it soak. But still, 
works pretty well, this debonder, or cellulose thinners I should say. Probably, truth to tell, I could probably leave them in there and they would come out, they would undo quite well on the screw, on, you know, just by unscrewing from the resin, but I'm kind of, I don't want them to get locked in such that there's any chance of them sticking good and proper. Alternative to um, when you have a situation like this is I've done it with another one is is to refill or put some timber in the neck pocket and um, recut it, you know, giving it a shallower depth, um, which you know get, get solves that problem. It's quite tidy. Obviously, you, get, you have a tiny little lip of um, timber that isn't finished with along with the original, but that's the that's the kind of the price you pay. Everything's still turning. You can see it's pulling up bits of now semi-solid um, lacquer, which is good. Lacquer? No, resin. You know the word I'm looking for. So I could possibly leave it from this point onwards, and then. Trust in the, the power of the screw to work its way loose a bit later on when I need it to. Um, yeah, there's no other way really other than um, clamping and involving the neck in the clamp, which I don't like because I'm not putting any, any pressure on the frets at all. It's starting to set quite well actually. I suppose a good thing about when it does set is that um, it doesn't move, it doesn't flow, so it will no longer be sort of working its way into the threads of these screws. Technically we could probably around that point take it take the neck out and the screws and leave it to sort of set in its flat state with just the neck heel pressing against it but as you'll see it's a sort of it's a plain chicken do I dare leave it I think I'd rather just do this pull them out and give them a little quick clean down and hope that it's still achieved a sort of fair level in there I mean, beauty of course is that we can take this po uh, this neck heel straight out uh, if we wanted to because it's protected by the plastic. So the feel of this is moving quite well. Moving well. Moving well. Okay, well I'm going to sort of leave it and off and on and come back and just tweak those screws and then see where we've got to. And um, when it's safe to do so, I'll pull up, or take it apart, and we'll just leave it set, hopefully in a nice flat position. 
or if it isn't nice and flat, flatter. So keeping it on that side, hopefully the, um, we're not getting any more flowing into there. But on the other hand, well, it's nice and flat. It's either flat or it isn't under there, so that's the bottom line. Um, I was kind of curious as to take it, if I took it off now, it shouldn't flow, should it? It's just, don't be impatient, Samuel. Right, I won't. Well, you never know, that might have, I'm hoping that's given us our sort of homemade wedge. Because it's trapping whatever resin's in there. But I could be wrong, it might just be, it might just be an ugly mess. But it's clearly, it's in place. And now we've got a, a different angle coming through there. So we'll have a, this is now brought up to meet the strings. So now we've got some upward movement but more importantly we can start from dead on the uh, frets and then move away for the low action this guitar deserves that's the point of shimming it um, anyway this stuff and the finish keep them apart if you're gonna do any cleaning it's this stuff good old-fashioned Coleman's cooking fuel So this will, should come up nicely with a buff. Um, like I said, there is a little bit of kind of uh, chipping around some of these holes, but fingers crossed, that'll all be all right. Okay, laters. Oh, here we go, well, here we go. Look, I have got John's, it's not gonna work, is it? It's the wrong size thing. I have got John's new brass block 42 millimeters and I'm just going to put it down into place <laughs> and we'll get a chance at some point to see how it fixes the problem but anyway I'm just I suppose I could go on and do it I hadn't planned that I had a, a bunch of other things planned to do like but oh, fiddle faddle now I should have something that works to do this thing, but I've, I've mislaid the one that does this. I don't know where it's gone, it's in the house somewhere. I have to go and find it. <clears throat> Anyhow, so what we got here is a mighty nice brass block and a crap, a really crap. Uh, what's it? Allen key, hex key. <clears throat> Which I don't want to use too much. In fact, if I use that, I, I think I'd rather... I think, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just uh, repair it. Watch this. There's nothing worse than a worn out hex key. And it's nothing worse for your equipment than a worn out hex key. So if you have a worn out hex key, right, you can do the following. get rid of, off of, the worn out bit. Now whether you get a square end or not is anyone's guess, but I think that will now be a beaut, yeah. So refresh your Allen keys, your hex keys. <coughs> Excuse me, by filing the hell out of them. That's a good idea. Da, 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 da. So, now that's that. Now along with that, <coughs> excuse me, we've got this, which is a super duper new arm. Now, it appears it comes with a, a, a hex key itself, which this one never had. So I have a feeling this is the wrong thing, unless that's supposed to come out and this is supposed to go in instead. I guess that's what's meant to happen, right? We take out this whole unit here, do we? Do we try? That doesn't want to come undone, that's for sure. I think that's the idea. Well, I have to hold this bit in place. So maybe that doesn't come undone, maybe we'll just hold that off for a minute, but there doesn't seem to be that much different from that. 
which I'm not sure what I've just bought here, John. Although, having done that, so that goes in there, doesn't it? Oh, it's two. You got replacement. Oh, weird. That's better. There's a little bit of play in there, but not, not near. Oh, jeez. Can I just put a piece of tape around this so I know which is which? <coughs> New arm. New arm has tape, right? You've heard me say it on tape, on tape, on the vid. Old arm doesn't have. <coughs> some movement. I think. Tiny bit, but not as much. So what the hell is the difference? None, frankly. Although that one maybe looks a little bit worn or outer. This should, by all accounts, prevent that from turning. So we're going to hold that in place while we undo it. Potentially, <coughs> potentially, you might have to hold it in place with this. same way so there's no way that just undoes it so there's no way <coughs> just using this arm I can get that to come out it's interesting so I'm gonna have to try and hold on to it by some mechanical means which isn't so cool but you just have to now is that gonna hold no it isn't why because it's not it's a round surface spin the whole thing, is that right? Is that spinning? Hmm, well, it is coming undone. Well, no, it's not coming undone. It's trying to come undone, but it doesn't want to completely. How weird. I don't want to grab, I don't want to end up grabbing the uh, thread on this at all, so. This to undo it. That looks all good ish. But let's go with the, the new one. Keep those things away. Well, two of those came with that, so let's just. I guess one of them might be a stop to extend the bar. Now, it's interesting is that it's too big. Old, new. They look the same. They may not be. Has this actually got a thread on it? No, it doesn't. It's just a hole. And do we want it to go, to go through like that? It goes through like that, doesn't it? Do. But what does it? Now that one's got that one's got a, a little grippy bit. That one goes right down to there. This one stops there. So it's not a direct replacement. That's weird. And I will not pull it into there because that's actually quite a bit wider. Theoretically. It should fit on there. It should be the same size hole. Let's just do a little measurement. Wherever my thing is. Measurey thing. Okay. Measurey thing. Measurey thing. Here. Okay. Diameter of new thing. 
911. Diameter of new thing, ooh, 842. So they do not work together, those two bits. That's interesting. But this does work with that. Right, that's good. But also, that still works with that. Good. Now we have a shorter and a longer screw scale skew. Now, could it be that the longer screw, which we didn't have access to before, helps us to make this work better? But this screw doesn't look like it belongs in there. Whereas, nor does this one actually. <laughs> they all look a bit skewy. Skew, skew, screwdriver, screwdriver. Does that work? Well, it does work. Yes, come on now. Now that sticks up like lourdes, and you can tighten that up by putting that in there, and then it, that goes onto there like that, and then presumably you tighten that up, and the whole thing sort of stops where it stops. Hmm, I'm quite a like of this. Now, we have the longer one in, right? We'll borrow the We'll borrow the thread, the washer here. Now we have this casing thing here, don't we? That goes on the outside out. The, ooh, does it? Oh, I'm just so confused now. That's the old one. And that doesn't fit in there at all. It goes up. Right, that goes to there. It's longer than this one. <coughs> this is the old one, it doesn't fit at all. That's the old one. And that sort of connects to there, probably, like that. Okay. That goes through there, like that. Hmm. Do you know, I am so confused. So that first one, how did it stay on? Because that went in there like that, didn't it? Ooh. Okay. I've just eaten breakfast and my stomach is hurting. Ow. It goes through there. And that goes up there. Matron. <laughs> that locks into there, as you'd expect. Then this new arm. No, that's yes, that's a new arm. Can then come down on there. And it is. Sticks out a little bit. Of that, and that's because I've used a longer thing that comes down to there and locks off there. What's that supposed to hit? That just sits on the top of there with no question. So that's all it does. So that comes down to there. Sorry, I'm just thinking aloud. That comes down to there, and then that connects with the underside of here which is the best you can hope for. And all you can do is grip it again to lock it in place because there's no other way of doing it up. Just use the same bite marks. Locked in place. On top. New arm. Kind of, there's a limit to what you can do with it. Thumb tight. But as soon as it comes undone, <coughs> it's swinging. It's, it's, it's a bit metallic. It's, it's like it's missing a some sort of packing or padding in here. But, would help it. That's gonna. Whatever we do, that clanks against there. It doesn't have a washer of any kind, which won't help anyway. <coughs> so the best of times, this little, these little teeth, are designed to hit the top of here and ride around on the top of that screw thread, and then your thingy does up <coughs> thumb tight. 
and it still leaves, <coughs> excuse me, it still leaves some de tiny little degree of movement within this unit. Great if I had a nylon bush of some kind in there to pack that out. We need the thread so we can't chuck anything in there. Um, it would feel like this wants to be under load. Let's try the old trick of a sponge or something. <coughs> I'm just going to dig out if it doesn't work, but let's make a little, little thin bit of sponge if we can. that in. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, a little bit of sponge in the end there. So this will push that in. And that will then theoretically compress the sponge. If it's if that's actually making a connection at all. Because it could still be below a level. Another bit in, and then if we don't get that, we'll hook both of them out somehow or other. Right. It's only sponge, it's only going to get compressed by this arm here. Now that's quite good, <coughs> that feels a little bit spongy. Spongy. Hmm. I think. I think, and don't count my chickens before they've hatched, but I think that's probably done the biz. This is the old one, let's put the old one together. Not that much different, I, had to, I thought I was getting a different unit to be honest, but okay. So there we have the new brass block, very beautifully heavy, with, I think, a stiffer arm without so much clonking and we can add some more foam <coughs> on top of that if we feel it needs it. That can go in the bin, that can go in the bin, that can go in the bin. And let's get shot a load of rubbish. Thank you. So while I'm at it, I'm just gonna put these saddle wheels back on. And um we should be in a good place. I just had to take the thing off and put the little thing back on, which I hadn't done when I tested it out a minute ago. So those of you with eagle eyes would have spotted that. Um, of course, that was deliberate. <laughs> uh, good, that's the right size for them. Okay, so let's, uh, what the hell? Does that say <laughs> G? I think that says that says G. I E A B G D A E. <sighs> there we have them all. There we have them all. So let's go I E first. No particular reason for sticking to the same ones. Just I don't know. Just in case. Now what I know is that these are a bit on the crunchy side. So I am going to. When I lay this under here, I'm just going to get all these out of the way for a minute. I'm going to put a, a blob of grease on the end of these. Uh, it'd be nice if I could do it first, but you never know. It's probably going to wipe off as I go through here. No, not too bad. Okay. Feels much better. Okay, so that's... That's the purpose of this is just to open and close the, the little block. So I've left them closed off for a minute, locked off so we don't lose the um, piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tiny bit of grease on here as well too. No harm. And I'm going to start that from the front edge. That's its starter position. And then we've got ready to go. Check the operation here, down and up. Lovely. Okay. B and so on. It never hurts me, me thinks to put a little bit of 
little grease on there just because it's very dry and that's what you don't want to have happen goes in that way little tiny blob on the end there through the hole into there screw it shut ideally get me the next one a little blob of grease on the end of there now we're going to position this one staggered back a fraction I've just done some chopping or drilling and filling on the um, the wangy neck of uh, the Coa Caster for Nick. Um, we're going to have a little bit of an extension on the headstock to fit the uh, hip shot thing, which is, I think, pretty badly designed on retrospect. Um, just looking at these things, they're just they're not a good design. Uh, meaning they don't. Um, the actual low pro hip shot low pro thing doesn't actually work with many necks. It claims to. It claims to work with necks that have, uh, have a truss rod fitted at the headstock end. Um, but actually, it, the first one I came to try it on, made by Warmoth, the neck that is, uh, doesn't fit because the, the the unit requires a minimum distance between the uh, a minimum distance between the surface of the fingerboard and the uh, top of the truss rod channel and amazingly this particular custom made neck all the way from Warmoth in the States doesn't have such thing um, which means the hip shot low pro unit won't work with it despite that's what it sort of claims on its blurb anyway uh, so I've had to extend the head head piece shall we call it a little bit um, in order to get it to work which means um, either well it means you, you basically you're in the danger of running into uh, having some of the tuna holes showing so I've had to fill those with sacrificial bits from elsewhere on the headstock and then wait till that's dried and then sand that out hopefully it'll be a, it won't be perfect but it will be close fit with the grain and everything it won't be hugely noticeable especially when you've got we've got the hip shot unit uh, sort of sunk into the uh, the wood a little bit and then there'll be strings going over the distance up to the nut anyway it's not perfect but it's surprising that I I think the the unit should carry a warning saying caution you know not you not appropriate for uh, guitars where there is not you know, there, is, there is not X amount of distance between fingerboard and truss rod channel it sounds a bit fiddly and finicky but since that's critical to making a guitar like this work uh, and, and the unit costs a hundred bucks you really I really think it's not oh, for crying out loud, it's not too small a, a thing to ask for that to be noted um, so I might send them a bit of advice or feedback on that see what they do with it okay so here are all the bits going back on Give a little polish off in a minute um, as I say, there's no particular reason these should be all interchangeable, but you know, there's no harm in sticking to the original uh, configuration if that's what's been played a while. I don't know whether it wears or sits in a particular way after a while, and there's no harm in just sticking to the original sequence, might as well, since it only takes a matter of making a note with a bit of tape or some such. Okay, well I've gone for two groups of three staggered. If I could only get this damn bolt in. Oh, lo. And behold, why is this so fiddly? Oh, God. Um, yeah. So I've gone for two groups of three staggered, which should give us the standard intonation pattern. No reason why not. Might be some small variations on that. Okay. So let's review what we've done. 
we have replaced the block, replaced the uh, arm and put some foam in as well as a new having a new arm unit fitted. So it should stop the squeaking and swinging around. This new taller, heavier brass block should create create it so that um, we get the tremolo back together again and it operates without squeaking. So since we're sort of there anyway, why don't we do that? Now just a quick thing. I've got some a bit of grease on my fingers and I don't want to handle John's guitar with that. I'm going to take the poisonous solution which is to wash it off but while I'm at it I'm also going to clean off the dust and gunge on the plastics that go on this guitar. While we're at it. Oh, the sun's out, right, that's it. Let the sky clear up a bit and then it's hammocks out. I tell you, a bit of time in the hammock, followed by some hard work, followed by some time in the hammock, followed by some hard work, and so on and so forth. Okay, so what I've got here is I've covered off the cavities prior to doing a polish with this and, oh, sorry, a buff. So what I can do is get me a clean piece of rag and give this a, a quick rub down. There's a little bit of buffing compound stuck on the side there, but it's all deliciously shiny. Both sides, yum yum. And you can see it's got some tape on there as well, which protected this cavity and the contents. Lovely, lovely. Again, a bit of buffing compound to rub off. It's a small price to pay for such a lovely finish. Whee. All right, now um, a bit of tissue paper hidden in there to block that out. Missed. Okay, so here we have the new, the new thing. It's a new sensation. Let's get out our trim claw. Let's get our skew driver. Now this time when I put this together, I'm going to follow the uh, Galeazzo Frudua method as always, but I'm gonna, it's not often I do it for a Floyd Rose, so I'm gonna do that with this Floyd Rose. And then um, I had a quick look at his, uh, his Floyd Rose method and it is beautifully and elegantly simple as is his other methods, as are his other methods. Oh, there you are, hello. And um, so I'm going to use his method again. It also involves uh, post-it notes, as you'd expect, and a little bit of a wedge, which I need to make actually. I've, I've got, I've got one, but I've got one, but I need to make a better one. Okay, let's just let's just tack that in there for now. So flip it for a minute. And posts now. These don't have to sink so low this time because we are definitely going to have some action adjustment space in this setup. Now, does that work with that one? Yes, it does. So let's, well, we can start low and then come back up. Something like that. Uh, so the pit guard's going to go under there. I'm hmm, just wondering if I should, you know, probably should reassemble that as well. Where did I put it? Where is it? From whence is it dangling? There it is. Oh, the sun is out. The sun is out. Our lawn has gone absolutely crazy because of the, um, uh, the extra rain we've just had. Okay. Uh, come on, on you go. Right. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Let's 
get a couple of um, screws in just to hold things in place. One. Now this one was interesting. This one got thinned down to make sure that the uh, tremolo didn't overrun it anymore. So it is a little bit hanging over, shall we say. But it has to be that way to make this work. Right. So while we're at it, let's make the let's make the pot stick in the right place. Get that sorted out. Probably a bit too sticky, sticking throughing. So it's quite quite a deep thing. Yeah, that maybe it's right. It's extremely <laughs> tight fitting. <sighs> okay, down to the end with that, and back through. Come on, come on. Put the adjustable spanner onto that to keep it in one place. No point having it move from this point onwards. It's quite quite a long way through, so um, it's just a, a single pot, so it doesn't do anything fancy. Okay. Ooh, yeah. So. How well this is looking at the picture. Ooh, uh, our new fancy. Wow, what a weight that's got on it. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. Let's just let's go with that for a minute to protect our nice paintwork and hold that. And I've got missing a. a, 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 a Play ours. Rest no, dropped off. I don't want that one. Okie dokie. Now, so not to upset the string purists, the spring purists. I am going to. Have I done this back to front? I think I probably have, you know. Uh, let's just have a look. Oh, this is a pain in the BUT. I think I've actually put this on back to front. <laughs> Does it, does it matter? I bet you it does. I bet you a million pans it does. Oh, yikes. Right, I'm just going to have a look, just to see. Otherwise, it's everything apart, however, again. <laughs> no. <laughs> look how far I've got to get that to reach those. Let's just have interest. Would that reach that? Uh, will it pre no, of course it's not. It's got to go apart. Oh, you stupid. <coughs> Get that out anyway, like that. Thank you. <gasps> oh, you! No, I don't believe it. Somebody should have of told me. Really? See that? <sighs> God! <laughs> Strike that. Reverse it, as Gene Wilder once said in his Willy Wonka portrayal. See this? I, I've always wanted to just take this all apart again. Just in case you didn't see it the first time, this is how the Floyd Rose assembled properly. Take all of these apart, turn the plate apart, and then blah blah blah. Put it all back together again, reset the notional in intonation. See, I can't even get it from there. I have to take it apart. Wholly, completely, thoroughly, and absolutely. It's so quick, it's like dismantling a rifle in the heat of combat. <sighs> oh, just as well I didn't get me a 
hammer cat, it's peedling down. Right, so the point was, some plonker has got to put the block the other way round so the little holes are facing the front. It's all right. It's a good opportunity to check everything again. <laughs> Fling to one side. I can't wait to get this together again. Right, so almost everything was right about that, including the positioning and uh, the front plonker. And we were going to there with that, weren't we? Now, where are we going? There with that, no, because that covers over the hole. That obviously has to go to there. Yes. What's hitting that? What's what's what's, what's going on? It's a little lip. Ah, there is a little lip. Where did that come from? No way. That can't. That, that can't actually hold that in place. Well, I got that accidentally right the first time. That's got to be that way. Got to be towards the front, like an Egypt that I am. Lots of nice fingerprints to be removed. Now we're going to line everything up again. Maybe, possibly. Yay! Here we go. Tighten those up ish. Get the third one in. <laughs> Lined up nicely, everything's good. Da 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 in there on the front edge. Thank you. Tighten. Tighten. And tighten. Polish a bit. And begin again. Shove that in there. Shove that in there. Just do it until it locks off the little block. We don't want it falling out and getting lost. Although you can steal some from any old Chinese tremolo, Floyd de Rosa like tremolo system. Shit. Having just said that, I now can fling it on the floor. That's cool. Okay. Now I can nick one from any old Chinese system. Just hold on a second. Okay, a little patience and a little no panicking. And we get there. Find it on the floor where I threw it. Phew. And I didn't even have to get the magnetic doofer out which is also quite handy when you can't see anything but you drop something ma magnetic and you can sort of rub it about on the floor a bit like a metal detector and you eventually turn up your lost uh, items, bolts, nuts, screws, whatnot, washers. Very handy indeed. Okay, so let's go back to do it just from here so I'm going to drop the thing hopefully that will come along this is just spannery I'm trying to work with something on the end of something that's pointing away from something oh jeez let's go into the hole would you blimey the other thing with chrome is of course you're staring at shiny chrome that's dazzling you most of the time so it's really hard to see what the heck you're doing so I'm going to bring this one flush to the edge of the tremolo and it kind of wants to move as soon as you start tacking it down it has an urge to go with the direction of the screw which is a bit odd um, so they're not the most accurate things in the world 
um, they, in a way they're the sort of an equivalent to those horrible tunematic bridges that I will not use the ones that um, kind of look really cool but actually have um, uh, yeah, hex locking saddles um, that you're somehow supposed to be able to adjust while the whole thing is under string tension. And the same really applies here. It's just it's a little bit on the not very possible side of things. Um, so your best bet is to get this right the first time, but it isn't always guaranteed. So with the with this one, I think it's a case of get one string, start off where you think it's going to be, and then get one string done and then work everything off, or two strings, gauge the gap and then work everything off those two, which is quite a good way of doing it. This has actually got three, I can't remember other units I've seen before having three. Mind you, they could do, I could go back and look, so it gives you quite a lot of scope for moving these backwards, which is really good. Okay, there we are. There are, there are, are our three. And we sort of go back in time. And put this beauty back in here. Sort of wiggle it around onto there. Put a bit of foam back under there. Flip it over. Oh look, we've got the things facing the front, thankfully. Pull this to the edge of its travel. Try and hold everything comfortably in position while you fit the first spring. Ta -da! And we'll go three clean down the middle of the unit, which should work. Fine. Two. And three. And of course you can you can have more or less springs depending on how you like it or you can have more or less claw tension depending on how you like it okay so we are on the on the what's it's um on the pegs the uh, no hang on a minute we are we are up of yeah up of the thing let's just get a, a arm in there for a minute try and get this lined up Get down in. There isn't enough forward, mo forward motion, forward pressure to keep this locked into the, the cinched bits. I don't want it riding half the way up. Okay, so there we have it. We've just got a little bit more room back over this side to avoid touching the plate. Okay, now, listen, fun. Let's put on the screws and one of these or two of these we've got a bit of leftover gunge ah we have to drill some pilot holes don't we yes do you remember do you remember Kaylee do you remember we've got our new permanent resin um, wedge which is cool but we need to flatten off sand flatten our new heel arrangement with its plugs but we also have to drill some pilot holes um, once we're flat we're pretty flat actually so I can get me a bit of uh, 180 would do and just to make sure that we are nice and flat we don't want anything interfering with the, the nice level we've got but just working inside the uh, visible area, stuff that's under the heel, just make sure it's nice and level. So you see, we have our, our nice fit now. 
and we have a height that's going to go nicely over the top of there. Um, but we don't have any pilot holes, so I think what I'm going to do is just I'm going to use the screws to make an initial um, an initial bite, just so I can see where they should where the pilot holes need to be. So we can use the charvel plate. Now these got a bit of still got a bit of um, stuff on them, whatever it's called. I've got the name of it. Uh, resin but it won't stop them going in. I widen the holes so they should pretty much go all the way through. And we should be able to just tap them more than anything just to get a mark. And that's what I want. It should sit all sit all around about the same place. Now obviously this will be variable but will give us this hopefully the best bet of a, a simple We'll start point to drill, guide hole. Sorry you can't see what I'm doing, but it's probably fairly straightforward. And I look at this and I go, hey, four little impressions. <laughs> four little holes. The question really is how much do we need to drill through or how, much, how far do we need the holes to go through and then push it all the way in. I should have put the plate in really. Um, so we're looking at, let's give it a good run of Look about four, 14 is a full length drill, but we don't really want to go full length, we want to stop a little bit short. So comfortably 10 and give it a little bit of maybe 12, but a little bit to bite into as well. Um, so 12 mil depth uh, thingy. Now could line it up to do it, but the question is here. I mean, just think about this, we're not going to be we're not going to be completely level with this, are we? Are we going to be completely level? Let's just get my head around this a minute. We are going to uh, 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 that's going to be there like that. That's going to be back, so that is actually going to change its direction. So with that in mind, I've got a feeling that what I really need to do is to put this in here and do it by hand to a given distance. That way I can ensure that this is going in at the angle it's going to need. It's going to be basically because it's on a tilt it's now going to go in at a very slight angle which it wasn't before. Well it was, no it wasn't, it wasn't before but it is now. So I'm going to need a drill bit. It suits this sort of size, let's have a think. That's okay, that'll do. We need, oh, Jesus, what was that? A piece of Wengi. Wengi. So we wanted to go 14 through here, didn't we? So I need to know where that stops there. I can't see anything in this light. Not like that, not like that, not like that, like that. Okay, so that would be through 15, that would be through about 12. Let's just hold that there, and let's just see what that looks like marked. Not massively scientific, as you can tell, but not totally unscientific either. In other words, it'll sort of probably do. Now, that won't allow me to grip the thing because it's too far down the thing, which means I have to get the thing and cut off the thing with the thing. Oh yeah, look, another blade gone. I don't 
understand where they go. But they do. Right. So what I want to do is just take off this paper here and mark the darn thing. Thank you. That should give me enough room to grip the thing. This has a bit of play room, obviously, because we're going down in a hole. It isn't exactly the same size. However, this should keep us fairly on the mark. Let's have a look. Very nice. So I will, I will tack in one of these. Uh, I'm actually going to use the, the thing and the thing off to one side. Let's see if I can just use that as a... Mm, let me think, let me think, let me think, let me think. Put that across there, in the correct place. Swing it out to one side. Put some tension on it. Hoik it out of the way. I'm just using it as a sort of spacer. I don't know if you can really see this, but just using it as a oh, there you go a spacer to hold everything neatly in place. Just look at the angle there. It's pretty good. Um, now I will do the same for the other ones. Now these have further to go, so they will. Now we still have some options obviously to loosen off, to realign the neck if we want to. That feels nice. And a darn sight solider than it was before. Okay, now we have it. Our newly attached neck with a different, slightly different angle than we had before. Which is quite something, thanks to our delicious, what do you call it, uh, resin wedge, resin wedge, resin wedge. Okay, so we have our things there, we have our arm kicking around somewhere over the rainbow. Two arms, one in there, one in there. Let's just have a quick feel of the arm. So, uh, miles clear of the strings, brilliant, springs, strings, wood, miles clear of the wood, yum yum. Everything good in there, uh, we only have to basically hook up the um, jack unit, jack plug unit, and it will be hunkily dorily. Now, I ain't sure, I want six regular black pick gun screws for the back plate. Four, five, six. We need a bunch more for the front. And we've got some odd long ones kicking around which don't make a lot of sense. Four. This takes three but does it take three extraordinarily long ones or does it take three We've got some, we've just got some weird sized things now that don't kind of add up. Longish, that's a pick guard screw type of one, that doesn't make sense. Sorry, that is a pickup ring, 
type length. That one's sort of like that one only, yeah, about the same. Three of those. This is different from the others. Again, that's two of those, about the same. That's probably for, that will be for the string retaining, no, the string retaining bar is already on there. Uh, tuner's good. Six, six, four, six, three, and two for the, two for the, two for the jack socket. Okay, so I don't know what, I don't know what that's from. Weird, weird. Now where's the loose one to go through? Okay, there is the loose one to go through. It goes through somewhere like here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, 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 this will all almost be ready. Okay, that's ready to go on there. That's that. Oh, that's so beautiful. So beautiful. That's that. We've got a huge playing action or a huge increase. In range now to work with which is great um, I suppose before I put the no I don't need to adjust any of that and I certainly don't need to be trying to put this on yet because that needs to be covered up but this can be shut and closed uh, so what have we got three of well funnily enough we haven't got three of anything there's four of those there's six of those there's tons of those I simply have a few left over and don't know why but let's go Standard sort of stuff. Standard black pickguard screws. Why not? Standard black pickguard screws. Make sure. Cavity de electrics done. Out of here comes our. Oh yeah, we've got three, haven't we? Ah, one is black. What did we say black was? We wrote it on the thing, didn't we? Very good. Not a lot of room there, but we should just get around it. That will be that. And then, we're in the game of raising things up. Now, I can't tell from here how, what sort of action this is going to give us. But we have a little bit of downward room, which is what we need. And we should, let's go off this one. No, we can't. Let's go off that one like that. Thank you. Okay. So what we've got is a deadly low action with a bit of room to play. Brilliant. That's exactly what we wanted. Oh, of course that's without, well that's with the thing tilted up. With, um, because it's a deck mounted, we do need a, a kick. It can't go down into a cavity, so it has to be in this position. So that's about right for that sort of setting, which I'm very pleased with. All this is good, so let's put the rest of these back in. And then I think I might hang this up. Hang this up. Oh, now these are these are some of these are really small. What's going on? I might um, hang this up and. Take a short break and then come back and finish this off when the soldering mood strikes me. Oh, various different si sizes, maybe some of these should have been the back ones. They're marginally different. Let's keep that for the back, a bit front. Front, back. Excuse me, I've come to steal some, please. Thank you. Small place. Large move. Small replace. Large move. Small replace. Which 
all means the six that are going to go into the back plate are a very odd set of long ones. I don't know why they need to be so long, but they are. Chuffed, very pleased. We are getting there. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Right, bit of soldering. You wouldn't even know this was on a wedge. Look how good that is. Solid. Oh, uh, mm, uh. okay, let's hang it up here and take a break. Did it, did it. Dangle, dangle. Thank you very much. See you in a bit. Just a quick check-in with this. Um, check-in, chicken. What I've done is I, I've just set this up quickly. Um, I've treated it like uh, it is a standard floating trim on standard. I call it standard floating tremolo on a strap. Um, the reason for that is because this strap is designed. This strap, this tremolo. It's designed so it doesn't have a cavity to fall back in. So with a Floyd Rose, typically you might have a cavity, in which case you, your back bends go into the cavity. Whereas this one has to be tilted because it's floating like a strap. So that seems to be working fine. It goes back to tune, <clears throat> so the big block has made all the difference. Um, now at the moment this is set at a, a very low action. I haven't really experimented with the action at all. Um, so I guess now is a good time <clears throat> to have a go at lowering it. And I don't think I've got, ah, oh, typical isn't it? The actual, the actual thing I need is in the house still, but I do have another one here, so I will endeavor, sorry, <clears throat> endeavor to not use that. Possibly not even this. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to look and see. Now the reason I'm doing this is these aren't the final strings. I'm just doing this so that I can check the action um, and set a, as low an action as possible. Uh, while we're at it. Now it's a little bit high on the travel side. <clears throat> now both of these things I have room to lower it which is great. That's what the shim in the neck has given us. It's given us that room to adjust. So we're still a bit high. So I'm doing the, uh, the evil unthinkable here. Notice something that John and I had a f an interesting chat about the other night <coughs> about the whole thing of uh, adjusting. This while it's under tension. Oh wow. <laughs> I love it. Oh John, you're gonna love this mate. It's playing perfectly well. The foam in here is has removed a bit of the rattle. Um this thing still and does when you turn it. There's kind of no way around it. Every time you move it, it undoes a little bit. It's kind of hard not to. Now these are, I'm not too worried about the tuning at the moment. Um, really I was just into the, making sure we got the action right.
Okay. Yes, we are there. <clears throat> now, uh, just as a thought, what do we need to do? Okay, so we need to reconnect the wires. Um, and we need to check that every note now at this action plays. Oh, squeaky. Let's check the uh, relief on here. Okay, there's some. That's good. Okay, so it is uh, obvious so from what I can see that for that playing action we do need some fret leveling. So that's the next stage of this beautiful guitar. Which I'm dead pleased to have got to where we've got it. Um, now I'm missing <laughs> this. That's what I wanted. A little thing. <coughs> so also I didn't use it on this one but I will use it. I made myself uh, a little wedge for, that looks like a sweet or something, a wedge for using on the tremolo for ployed roses where there's a, a hole in the body, uh, you know, recess in the back of the body. But there isn't one here, so that's not going to be necessary. Let's just move a few things out of the way. And then we can get on to the fret level part, which is where we're going to make this thing play as low as it should, um, given what it is, which is a very nice, nicely made guitar. Um, that's a spare one, chuck that out of the way. Some spare lead. Swing your lead. No, what do they call shift your lead? No, I don't. Right, now that goes with this one. That's that. That goes with the other one. That's that. That goes with that. Okay, so pretty much onto the standard game now, only because it's all. Hmm, okay. Right, so at the moment what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to undo the locking nuts. Right? And the reason for that is that I don't need them to be in tune for now. So they're just, they're just sort of... I'm just using this now for the purpose of fret levelling and I need to be able to pull the strings in and out of the slots. <clears throat> so the one thing I haven't really checked on this at this, act, at this setting is the first fret action but it's incredibly low which is what you'd hope for a guitar like this so there's no well I say there's no need, need there's no need to move it but that is probably fret slap which means which means really we need um, this is too much relief remember that <laughs> From before. Oh crap, it's down there. Should have thought about that before I put the damn thing on back on, didn't I? Okay. <clears throat> right. Okay, so first of all, the amount of relief right now doesn't matter as far as fret leveling is concerned. All I do is tune the tool to match it. However, a couple of things. I need to probably shim this a little bit. Now we've got a shim here that came off something else, but it's too big. So I think uh, I think that it's, it's kind of difficult to make, but we've got some interesting little bits of copper here, which we can probably make some cut out some uh, templates out of to shim it a certain amount each time. And actually, I'll tell you what it. Oh, that's where one of the three of those went. Thank you. Bizarre. Something magnetic here. Then. Um, so yeah, what, so what we've got is we've got a shim of wow, a tenth of a millimeter. Okay, which is quite neat because if that's uh, 0.1 or something, then this will then be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on. So we can go up in chunks, but we need to draw that out, make a copy of this in order to to do it, um, which shouldn't be difficult. You just need to cut its shape and then cut out the 
holes. Um, okay, so we can do the fret level, but then we'll take it off, we'll adjust the neck relief, we'll shim that, and then we'll, yeah, and then we'll put new strings on. So that's all we need to do for now. And we just carry on now as if it's an ordinary guitar. But because it's set up and floating, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and mark up the frets without taking the strings off this time. Um, which is going to take a bit longer, but it means I don't have to disturb the tuning and the setup, which would be take some time to re-establish um, if we were going to uh, take the strings right off. Because, of course, this is a floating trem which has to sit in a kind of equilibrium, which takes a while to achieve, but we'll get it back later on when we come to... Oops, get rid of the pen off there. We'll clean that up off, 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 off of there afterwards. Out in my thumbnail. And again, it doesn't matter that I'm drawing on the strings at the moment as well either. Just so we can get where we're going. fiddly doing it this way but get there so it, it needs a little bit of fret leveling for the nice low action that we're going to set on this but this guitar um, I always want to get a good result but for John Bruce I really want to get a good result because John not only is he a nice guy and a friend but he can also play like you wouldn't believe as well so this guitar needs to be his number one guitar uh, because it deserves to be so that little extra bit of playability we're going to get out of it now for this lovely low action frets are nice and jumbo so there's, there's enough life in them to do this <laughs> so I'm just going to make a note of this because there's three things I need to do in succession or four actually for the, number one Fret level, um, reprofile, and polish out, of course, standard stuff. Number two, uh, tighten truss rod, which means taking the bleeding neck off. Number three, uh, shim nut, and number four, uh, a slight realign neck neck towards um, more room for high E and then finally I guess restring stretch out etc and get it back up to equilibrium <coughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, I tell you what. Mm -hmm. Let's be let's be clever. Let us just check something here. Okay, so I'm hearing all of those as short, uh, sorry, as flat, um, which means this, the, it's interesting. So on those, what did I do? A, D, and E. Let's just jot that down as well. So I went A, so I don't know. So A, D, and G. A, D, and G were all flat, which means they're too long, which means we need to bump the saddles forward. A bit on all of these so again we'll do that with the strings off and the, when we're doing the truss rod adjustment not a, not set up easily to do easily right so let's get on with this so here we 
go. The good old system. Um, somebody, somebody said, uh, asked me today if I was the only person, or it seemed that they said something like it seemed like I was the only person on YouTube doing this kind of yesterday actually, this kind of fret leveling, which it just was an odd thought, really. Um, you know, to to imagine being now this doesn't want to this doesn't want to move without slackening it off. So that's a bit tricky. Um, uh, no, it messes everything up. Uh, mm, tricky. We're going to have to work around this. Uh, short of. Hmm. So that's that's why I sometimes lock a tremolo down to do the fret leveling because I'm kind of at a disadvantage now uh, <laughs> with this. I can push that out of the way there, but I'm going to have to physically move that out of the way by hand at this end. It's not impossible actually. Um, I'm just in danger of leveling the, the string a little bit in the process. But anyway. Um, yeah, so somebody, somebody said, oh, oh, you're the only person on YouTube doing leveling this way. And I thought, well, actually, that's a funny thing to conceive of, but maybe that's true. How weird. And then it did, it did occur to me that, you know, if, if uh, the original inventor of this method The inventor, original inventor of this method, had um, been more successful. I would expect to see more people, um, you know, more how-to videos with, with that method being shown. Um, but I, I don't really see many. Um, I, may, I mean, I've seen one or two people demoing the katana system, but that's it. Um, which is kind of weird. So maybe, maybe. <laughs> Maybe it hasn't taken off. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm now doing the, the B track, but I'm also pushing the, the string out of the way to do this as well. So using the same calibration as the E, which is what I normally do. And then um, I can see ah, I've got a cramp in my hand. <laughs> I can see some uh, metal coming off the frets, which is good. good. Calibrate again for the G now. And um, it's funny, it's starting to get cold. I can feel the cold air behind me. I need to just make a small adjustment now. So basically at this point I'm going to continue as a, a normal setup having done the, replaced the tremolo block and so on. I'm going to treat it as a normal setup. The great thing is that it doesn't matter. This guitar doesn't mind that um, it's floating as a tremolo. It's got a floating Floyd Rose. Um, the action is where we want it. The floating is where we want it. Um, so we're, we're leveling in an as played or playing state, which is exactly what we want to be doing. Um, to make this work. So it's bending all the notes fine so far, which is great. Sounds good to me. So it has needed a little bit, that's, that's for sure. It wasn't too bad, but it's needed a little bit to play at this, but we're talking now an action. Oh my god, my crap. We're talking an action of one millimeter on, on both the low E and the high E. But that's um that's it's not surprising given this neck has got a, a flat radius. Um pretty flat radius, relatively flat radius. Um I kind of expect it to tolerate 
a really low action. Now we're on the D track. There's quite a few things to do after this because of the, the kind of curious way. As soon as you have something with uh, a Floyd Rose and a heel, or yeah, heel mounted truss rod adjuster, things start to get a little bit complicated because you can't just make an adjustment. Yeah, you can't just just adjust it you have to take the neck off but then there are a few other things to do like reposition the realign the neck slightly so we can do that at the same time as changing but a bit like the intonation the adjustment of the truss rod is like um, taking a chance you don't really have any say in it you just have to make an adjustment and hope that it comes out at the sort of amount you want it is hit and miss when it's down there I know the Warmoth, for example, as I discovered, make um, what they call a modern, vintage modern, I think, um, guitar that has a, a, a heel adjustment, but it also has a side adjuster, which can help you out of that. You get it sort of broadly set, and then you can use the side. A bit more. Yeah, you can use the, the side adjust it to kind of get you where you want to go um, but when it's in the heel like this it's just an absolute pain you really are flying blind oh, crash it's all right no harm done Good. And finally, the low E. Oh, my hand has gone crampy. Too much gripping things. I've done so many weird little things today. I made, I've drilled and I know, filled, cut the headstock on uh, Nick's cover caster, and I've, I've um, filled, f filled the uh, tuner holes, which we aren't going to use with. Um, Wengi from the top of the headstock and then I've cut the shape to fit the uh, hip shot bridge or sorry hip shot head piece onto it so that's done and looking good pretty much lined up and uh, I've got loads of little steps to do that next I've got to drill and glue in the uh, neck marker dots might be a little bit of a push for this uh, neck down here but we'll, we'll keep trying for a little bit and then give up on that if we have to but see if we can eke that out, recalibrate to be on the shore side. Oh bloody fingers are seizing up. Okay, more of a curve here needed. 
such a minuscule adjustment. There we go. Easy. And then we're going to concentrate on the top part now. Just squeaks it out, but it's so low. Okay. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have. Oh, I probably still need. No, I'll use foam this time. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off these strings because we are done. So, I'm going to park a bit of foam under there to protect things. I'm going to take off the strings now. And we're going to chuck them away, they've done their service. And then I'm um, going to thingy out the, what I'm going to do, polish out the frets or re profile the frets, polish them out, and uh, we shall be away. I'm also hoping, John, that you notice the uh, the disappeared uh, ball patch of lacquer on the back here, which used to used to be able to feel it. And there's a couple of big dents next to it as well, and they're they're all gone and filled, filled and buffed out. So I'm really pleased with how that actually turned out. Better than I thought it would be. Now this is getting tricky. That's trying to drag these coiled wires through here so I don't really think I'm going to do that I'm just going to take them out here now I'm going to put a very small tiny amount uh, of shim under this uh, nut here it's going to be very very small and slight 0.1 I think I'll start with 0.1 but I might make two one after another just to be on the safe side if I can use one as a template for the other and that way I can just drop another one in should it be needed sometimes um, similar to this copper tape I've used um, uh, self-adhesive copper tape as well which is a, a really nice way of um, keeping the amount you're lifting by uh, down to a very very small uh, small amount. Okay, so I need. Where's my? Not this, is it? Nope. Where's the one I chopped up earlier? Here's the one I chopped earlier. There it go. Did I put it in here? No. Did I put it in here? Possibly. so the little blocks don't fall out because we'll be moving things around a bit. Talk about fiddly. But worth it, worth it I tell you. It would be a bit easier if I had my screwdrivery Allen key, hex key. But right now I don't. I'm just doing these back up so we don't lose the little block. Quite, quite important. That's quite a way to go on the thicker strings. So. Takes a bit of turning. Right. Strings gone. So this is it. Yeah, because of because of the, it's Floyd Rose, but it's acting like a two-point standard inverted commas two-point tremolo. Um, it's a it's a little it's an odd one. Okay, so I'm going to take care of the frets first. Um, so we're going to just mark them up again, and this time I'm going to 
reprofile them so we get them shaped back into a nice arch shape instead of a flat spot that it currently has. Use, this, oops, use the old Stumac Jumbo fire. Wow, these have been flattened at some time in their history. Way more than I've done, I have to say. Blimey. That is quite, quite flat. I don't know if that's maybe a characteristic of uh, the neck anyway, but it's unusually flat. So it's taken a bit of work to re-establish. I think that might be the same for all of them, actually. Get back to a arch shape where the intonation points right in the middle. This is where we really want it. It's getting there. It's okay. Yeah, they're all kind of the same. So regardless of really the levelling I just did, they're all they've all been flattened fairly much <laughs> bigly in the past. It's okay. We'll work around it. It just means it's, it's taking a bit longer to get it where I want it. But it'll be worth it. The idea being to get a single thin line of marker pen down the middle the centre of the fret and that ensures that the what I was call the intonation point although it's not really the crown of the fret is down the centre whereas if, the, if it's flat the intonation point you might call it moves towards the bridge and actually on a frets like these they're wide enough for that to actually be in the in the uh, realms of a millimetre or so, which can have a profound effect on your intonation. So they say, you got to remember, I'm not anywhere near good enough a player to even notice that, but I think if you're, well, I don't like doing that, thank God. Um, if you are and if you're a, a good, accomplished player, then it does matter. There was a big um, argument in a forum the other day that I avoided commenting on, where I think I mentioned it in another video, but where some, a, what sounded like a fairly experienced guitar tech came and made a comment regarding this process here, and somebody giving advice out on the in the page of the forum or whatever it was, was saying it didn't matter at all whether you got uh, you rounded off your frets again, um, and he said, well, actually, he made the point I just made about the intonation point, and they these fools on this site tried to humiliate him and ridicule him. It was a pretty nasty display, actually. Um, uh, and I very, I, I, actually my finger was hovering over the leave group button at that point. I just thought it was a, a, a really ignorant display of dogma. Um, and this person, you know, anybody with half, half a brain could see that this person clearly had lived experience of doing this. Um, and sadly, they took it on themselves to try and gang up on him, actually. That's what it felt like. It, was, it seemed like. It was pretty unpleasant. I didn't leave because I just thought, hang on, I need not to react so much. I don't want to end up taking sides, you know, and people can fight their own battles. And I think the, the person in question just ended up by saying something like, well, have it your way, ta-ta, and disappeared. Which which is probably the right thing to do. But, um, yeah, it's pretty 
I, I don't like it when you you kind of hang out in some forum and then you discover actually that people are pretty much like every other cross section of the ignorant world of general public or ignorant in some ways about some things I guess. You know, I've said many, many times I don't mind, I, I value people disagreeing and having different opinions on things but I don't value the sort of bullying, ridiculing, dogmatic, dogmatic approach, you know, where people seek to out-shout other people and shut them down, you know, and kind of win through the process of bullying so that they, they think they, their view reigns supreme when in fact what's happened is that the person who doesn't need that in their life just clears off and goes elsewhere, which is a loss to any community, I think. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is that's while well, we've got this here, we've got a whole bunch of polishing out to do, but we've also got to take a look at this action down here, um, which I'm thinking is just seemed to me to be a, a fraction under, and it's already shimmed on the edges, which is quite interesting. And the shims are. Have a look. Come along. Shims are 0.3. Okay, so so we've got 0.3 on the edges. Um, 0.3. So we need that 0.3 and raise you some. So we need 0.3 plus a bit more. So we could have four of these bits together, which will give us four, but then I don't want to have to glue them together because that will just start getting annoying. Um, but having said that, I do have a tr one of these ready or ready already. So that was, that was what did it say, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and it wasn't enough, but it wasn't enough by not too much. So this is, Way more. It's 1.5. So that's nice. It's look. It's already probably custom made. Oh, you could probably just use that straight. But it's no use because it's way too thick. Now we've got a few of these. Like a bit of plastic. No. A bit, of, a bit of brass. What we're we doing in the brass department. So that was 0.3. And we could have. Oops. A bit of brass, which is also 0.3. Uh, okay, so the brass is the same. Um, the brass is the same, but the difficulty is it needs, to, it needs to have some holes drilled in it to make it kind of match up. So either we go all the way around, or if failing that, we we could put one of these in, couldn't we? That's an extra ten, and then put those metal ones back in, and we could drill. Actually, these could just go straight through, couldn't they? Hmm, that's probably a way to do it, he said, thinking out loud. So we stick that there like that, and then that there like this. And we cut that there like that. Uh, if, if, for example, we were going to put that in there like that, and we're going to put these little chappies back where they were, so 0.3, not exactly perfect. They're, they're kind of slightly curved over these things, so they don't they don't sit absolutely straight. But we could put that on top of there like that. Put this on top of here like this. And technically, you should be able to tap that through and screw it in. <laughs> Sorry. Because it's only thin. It gives us our 
0.1 of a mil lift over what was already there. How do you think about that then? Yeah, that's about right. Okay. I think that will do. Line it up. Proper. Tidy. Give it a little bit of a turn by hand. There we are. Okay. That's a 0.1 lift on top of what we had. It's small, but on a first fret action, that's enough. It's mild. Okay, so that's that bit taken care of. Next bit, let's put these fret leveling things out of the way. Okay, next thing we had to do was adjust the um, well, we had to adjust the both the right. Hold on, hold on. I'm getting there. We have to adjust both the neck position and the relief. So now I think I'll leave the alignment until. Um, until we're, uh, there you go, there's our new, new holes in our new footings, <sighs> nicely on target. So we need to tighten this up a little bit, because it's too relieved. That's the wrong size, again. <laughs> Guess, oh blimey, holy crap, that is, <laughs> John, that I'm afraid I think there's a problem there. Bad news for you. Dear, that's not good. Uh, I think we just hit a limitation on this guitar, which is a shame. Uh, stiff as anything. I'm barely making a difference. Let's hope that that's, the, well it's the best we can do I'm afraid. It looks like that's a bit had it I'm afraid John. Uh, let's see, I trust that that will work out all right. Okay, there's our, mm -hmm, there's our that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we'll put this back on, we've done our adjustment as good as it's going to be, how's our, our, um, what do you call it, that thing, resin thing, resin wedge, just out the extra bits of dust. I like that, it's feeling good. Actually, while we're here, there's a little bit of excess on the edge there. Um, I wonder if we can just take that back without, I oh, see it's got the polythene still on, of course. That's cool. <laughs> I, don't wanna, I don't wanna go too far with that, because otherwise I might remove the paint, in which case I'll be very sorry because that'll make it look worse. Okay. Thank you. All right, so that's that back together again. Now comes the bit where I get to turn this turn the camera off and do this off camera, but I'm just going to do the usual long-winded polish out, which of course involves a lot of masking tape. Um, 
and lots of cutting of masking tape to ensure that we get to polish this out. Polish the frets out up to a nice plain condition um, at the same time as Yeah, just rounding them, smoothing them, smoothing them off. Oh, while I'm at it, that was the other thing to do. We said that all of these were on the short, uh, they were flat, so they were too, that's weird, they were too close, uh, sorry, too far away, so we need to bring them closer in, which means I'm going to adjust this one. Don't tell me, that was... Uh, <laughs> I thought that was the right size. Oh, okay. Okay, just hold it there because it, it isn't very reliable how these things work. So I'm going to push that forward a couple of mils and lock it down. And I'm going to follow suit, follow on with this one. In fact, I'm going to go to the edge, possibly even further by what it sounded like. Go to the edge with that one. I'm going to go forward with this one a little bit. There. So shortening the playing length of the string basically. And then I'm going to push this one forward which means I need to take it out replace it in a different hole at the front and push the whole unit forward to there about right like that it's very clumsy now this one we're going to start, um, what did we say, there? so the A, D and G, A, D and G were long, flat, so therefore this one's going to come to about there, <laughs> still probably isn't right and I'm still going to have to redo it, but and this one, yeah, this one's got to come out, all together. Italy. And then that comes forward to my chosen spot about there. Very small adjustment, so I'm hoping. Sorry, I'm not even looking at them in the right place. My fault. I'm hoping these will be enough to uh, make this correctly intonated. But even when you tighten them up, it kind of drags the saddle forward, which is really naff. Okay, and this one's going to have to come off too. Sometimes you can see better what's happening by looking at the back edge of these. Come on, in you go. Ah. <laughs> This one doesn't want to go in. No, it does. Right. Push this forward to there. No, see, it locks in. It yanks it forward when it's on the edge. That's really crap. Naff old system. Anyway, we'll leave it like that. So, we have done all our things. We have fret level reprofile, yes. We've tightened the truss rod as much as it will be. We've shimmed the nut, yes. We've realigned neck, no. We've reset the adjusted the intonation a little bit. Right. Okay, that's it for now. I will see you when, 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 when. What have we got to do? When? Oh well, I can do everything, can't I? 
put some new strings on. I'll do this off camera, level this out, sorry, polish this out. Then we'll hook up the electrics, put the strap buttons back in, maybe strengthen them with something, and then restring. See you in a bit. And here we are. Look, we're in the fun stages of fitting the strings. And uh, yeah, I've put, uh, I'm, I've got no tens on. I'm not sure if this was tens or nines anyway, but um, I'm fitting nines now. And of course, our John can change it later if he so desires. But this will put. If it were, if it was originally tens, this will put less load on the neck, which will be interesting to see. Um, get to flatten it out a bit. <laughs> it might be, it might be a kind of convenient thing, but who knows? Anyway, so so the thing now with this is to I'm going to string it up and then I'm going to stretch out the strings thoroughly um, before attempting to tune up or set, set the floating tremolo. In fact the tremolo, hmm, I was going to say it should go, it should kind of just go back to where it was a minute ago but actually if it's a change in string gauge then it won't so we'll need to go through that process again of uh, setting it. But the old Galeazzo Frutua method is just brilliant. I mean, people write books on it and stuff, but it's just got such a simple approach and it, it gets it right every time. So we shall follow that. I mean, it was working absolutely brilliantly a minute ago and it was that simple, so you don't have to go through any major complicated stuff to get it working. So anyway, what day is it today? God, I don't even know Wednesday, is it? So, I've got, yeah, I've got a lot done, but I've got lots of odd little things done, important little things done, some major milestones like cutting the uh, headstock on the uh, Coacaster for Nick, get that moving, because it's been forever in the making. Not helped by messing up on the first neck and making some changes along the way. Um, ow! But we'll get there. So far, so good. Okay. So the main thing about getting this right will be to stretch the living daylights out of all of these strings before we. Um, Try to set the tremolo floating and lock it off. So it's getting getting the stretch out will be the most critical thing. Getting this these blocks to bite the strings is also quite hard. I think it's a really poor design, as I've mentioned before. How the hell they ever the friction ever holds these things in place? I don't know. But somehow it does. I wish it was the Yamaha version with the which caters for the ball end of the strings at the other end. So it seems to me a very sensible arrangement. Okay. So just about everything ready to go now. Okay, cut off the excess. Now the thing about getting the stretch done on this is that we don't need, it doesn't need to be, uh, we don't need to worry about the position of the tremolo to do the stretching. We can just get that done as is now. There's our Morris. Um, so, you get stuck into it. Bulging eyes. And well, obviously, we're going to need to tune it with 
um, an onboard tuner, I mean a plug-in tuner or a clip-on tuner because this will not, you can't do a relative tuning, you can't take a note from somewhere and hope that you can get everything in tune. When you're tuning a Floyd Rose, you have to get it in a, a state of equilibrium. So, if I get my clip-on tuner, it's going to be difficult at this stage. On. Hello, Morris. Come on then, jump up here. You have to trust me, don't you? Okay? You have to trust me when I say there's room here for you. You have to trust me. Because you don't know what's on top of here. Show everyone your bum and your stumpy tail. Bits of copper. You alright fella? You're growing your rough back aren't you? You're getting your little fluffy bits behind your ears coming back. Meow. What a great boy he is. Glad he's not gone away again. No idea where that is in terms of tuning, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna trust it as being anywhere near in tune, so we're gonna stretch out the strings again. As much as possible. And uh, Then, once that's done, we should be getting closer to being able to set it up. Actually, if it is the same gauge, which it might be, um, then it will. The trend will go back to position. This is still acting as a hardtail because I think it's lying down on the. Um, foam. Now, a bit more, <laughs> and next go, or any minute now, in fact, any second now, and just take off the uh, block, and I think the block is taking itself off, so we're now in floating mode. And it's now down to us to get the tremolo into equilibrium and then lock off once we feel we've got as much of the slack out of the strings as possible. It just saves you having to kind of reposition everything afterwards. But before you lock it off, go to about halfway down each of these micro tuners and leave it at that place and then
Getting there. Let's do a bit of just to reaching. Now this has gone up quite a, a bit higher, which means this that's, that's interesting. Are these heavier gauge strings than was on there? I don't think so. I kind of suggest that at the moment that it's pulling forward like these strings are pulling more force on the springs. Um, but hey, we'll we'll see what happens. Maybe not. Maybe it's the same. Okay, the time has come to lock down the things which are now over here. Come along, where are you? Come on little hats. Three little hats. Three little tuna, three little feet things, yes. Okay, so here we go. Time to lock down eh, this one. Find our. Where is our? There it is. Very good. What did he say? E and B. That's what he said. And then he said, check the tuning of the other bits. Perfect. Do them. Lock them down, forward facing. forward than it was originally. <laughs> okay, so guess what we do is we tighten this up again. We'll go and we'll go and do it again as if we were starting again with Wherever it's gone, here it is, with the um, tremolo, because it's too far forward, for my likings anyway. So I'm going to 
tighten it down with the screws, which will no doubt cause a big change in pitch. Wow. So that's still it's quite something. Let me see. Hmm. How weird. Very strange. Why is that now? So I want this to be down further. Right, let's undo this. Hmm. really weird this is now strange because I'm sure there was a light if the same if not lighter gauge so I'm a little confused so basically I still want this to pull the tremolo block flat please to begin with of Jimmy Saddle. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I should have done at first. I'm going to put enough in, treat this as a floating tremolo again. I'm going to put some, put some paper under there until it's held horizontal from the pun, perpendicular, is that the right word? Horizontal to the guitar body, which is about there, okay? Now this is effectively a hard tail now. Tune her up. So here I have my hardtail Galeatsu Fridua method. So we start with the guitar in tune hardtailed resting on blocks. Okay, we start with G. G and we go forward until the G becomes an E. F sharp. F falling. E sharp of. of E, dead on E, let me tune everything,
tune this now to a normal pitch. Then lock off the tuners. This is my version of it. Slightly different from Galeazzo's, but hey, this works for me. Lock them off. Lock them off. And lock them off. Okay, then <coughs> remove this. Now we're sharp. Now we get ready with the right tool. And we now tune the G down to G. Coming down from G sharp. Coming down to G. Let's get this other one out. Down towards G. It's funny that now it's no. Now we're back to the uh, sort of action that we wanted. Weird that, isn't it? You have to redo it. Coming down towards G. <laughs> How weird is that? There we have it. So, quick check now. <laughs> Millimeters, oh no, that's raised up, so we do have to adjust that. It's okay. And we hope we have enough left to do the adjustment. That's funny. Do we have enough? Because that was pretty nicely set up before. Where's it gone? Right, there we go, the last little bit, 1.5, there we are, 1.2, 1.5, down the last bit on the treble bit, and we are now at the stops, wow, that's it. That's 1.2. That's obviously changed the uh, tuning a little bit, so we'll just unhook this and do one more tune up and then lock it off again.
Oh, lock them off. Damn it. Mm -hmm. Lock them off. Damn it. And finally, lock them off. Okay. And. There we go. Mm. Last bit to do tomorrow will be to uh, wire up. Or maybe I'll do it. I'll do it off camera. But I'll wire up the um, wire up the um, num, 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 wires. Um, yeah, I'll do it off camera now, and then we'll be done. So that's it. Beautiful. <laughs>